You know, I love my people. I, and I have friends of all races, but I'm still a black woman first. And I feel like until we get a hold of loving ourselves, it's hard for other people to love us. And we don't just, I'm not at a point in my life where I'm not to beg nobody for nothing. You, you know, and I think a community that's well organized has to do more than just shout for change. Let's support each other's businesses. Let's teach each other about financial independence. Let's do more than just shout for Black Lives Matter because it's bigger than that. Peace, peace, and welcome to another episode of Cook on Monday Morning. At Cook on Monday Morning, we are building lives that make us excited about Monday morning. We believe that if you can own Monday morning, you can own the week. If you can own the week, you can own the year. And if you can change your year, you can change your life. So this is a, a big moment for Cook on Monday Morning because I have a bona fide, certified, undefeated, undisputed uh, the I wrote it down so I didn't mess it up. <laughs> the WBA super welterweight champion, San Francisco's own, uh, the only woman that I don't know whether to ask out or to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or to duck if I see her coming. Miss Raquel Miller is a proud daughter of the great city of San Francisco, a graduate of our public schools, uh, is representing our city tremendously well as uh, a great champion and is an inspiration to, I think, uh, women and anyone that is interested in pursuing something worth doing. The pretty beast. Yo, yo, yo. What's up? <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm excited, you know, to be a part of your podcast and just to kind of talk, especially being that you're from my city. Um, I think that's dope. And I'm excited just to kind of talk and be able to kind of go over some San Francisco stuff, some Bay Area stuff. So I think yeah. that's dope. Now, I appreciate it because I know you're really busy uh, and I'm sure you get a lot of media requests just to let everybody know she was incredibly generous with and and, and, and available. So um, you're a dope a person. I appreciate it. Not a problem. <laughs> so you went you went to Gal, right? Um, I did go to Gal. Um, I've been to numerous San Francisco schools. Um, so I went to McIntyre before, I've been to Galileo before, I went to 1950 before, I went oh. to independent study before. Okay. Before I was there. <laughs> <laughs> 1950. Yes, I did go to 1950. 1950, I was like, you know, I need to get my life together. I do uh, not, you know, like, I'm not the greatest kid, but 1950 was a bit much. And I was like, you know, mom, I'm going to do right. <laughs> I'm not gonna stay here. So, but yeah, so I've been to a couple of schools in San Francisco. I uh, I Wikipedia'd you. So uh. <laughs> I actually I actually feel kind of special that I have a Wikipedia. That's so funny. Like I uh, haven't really got to check it out and see it. So I need to Google it so I can see what. It is. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, I don't know, but I need to check it out. Well, yeah, I just found out that we're the, we're the same age. And yeah. So we, okay. Grown and sexy. Yeah. What's that? Say grown and sexy. There you go. Yes. Um, and so we might know some of the same people. And it's like, a, it's a trip because there's some other prominent Black San Franciscans that are doing interesting, important things. And, uh, and you know, our circles were so small, but we never crossed paths. And so that was the surprising part. I was like, dang, I never, I never really heard about you, I guess, until I got back from college and was an adult. Did you, okay. did you go to school? Did you go to college? Um, yeah, so at first I went to city. Initially, I was going to go to San Francisco State, and then I took the entrepreneur route and was like, you know what? Um, I want to focus on traveling. I want to focus on boxing. And so that kind of just took me out of that realm. So maybe when I'm done with boxing, I'll go and I'll get a degree, potentially. Um, uh, yeah. Potentially, maybe. <laughs> potentially. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. So potentially. Are you currently preparing for a fight? Is that happening? So at the time, I'm currently not preparing for a bout, but I'm always just training and just staying ready. It's been really challenging right now with the whole COVID thing. Um, I haven't had a official date as of yet. It's been pretty challenging, but, you know, we're still working. We're hoping to get a date pretty soon, and I would love to close this year off with um, my 11th win. No. All right, so some San Francisco stuff. Let's do it. What's the best burrito spot in San Francisco? I like um, 24 Permission Spot right on that corner. Uh -huh. um, and I also like 
Yes, and I like the one on 16th too. I think it's El Faro. So. Pancho Villa. Yeah, Pancho Villa. I should know that. They sponsored me before. No, <laughs> 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 I actually know that. But I like they, they shrimp nachos as fire. So those are my favorite um, go tos for burritos. Okay. Um, best sandwich spot. I think the best sandwich spots, and forgive me because I never know the name, but the best sandwich spot in San Francisco was that one that's like almost across the street from the Bible pool. Oh, uh, look, I think. What? That's the one. Roxy's. Like, yeah. yeah. That's the one. So that's yeah. The best San Francisco. That's yeah. definitely the best one. Yeah. That's all. That's, that's how you know she's bona fide. Yes, yeah, so definitely that's, in the city. I'm a city girl um, for the show. Yeah. So, Yes. Uh, when was the last time you were here? Um, I don't come home that much anymore. Okay. Like, I, like I like I need to. Um, I've been. I came home. I came home for Mother's Day. Okay. Yeah. Wait. I think I came home after that too. But I don't really come home that much. But I'm gonna do better. I don't like the cold weather anymore. I'm just okay. over the cold weather Bay Area. Like I'm over cold weather. I don't like the cold. So that's one of the reasons why I don't really always want to go home. It'd be cold and um. You know, it's different um, home. It's a different environment at home. It's not always a positive environment at home. So, um, yeah, I don't always go home. But I think I went home maybe like, I think I went home for Mother's Day. I knew I went home for Mother's Day, but I think maybe, I can't remember. I'm like, did I go again after that? I probably did. I think I did one more time. But I don't be really going home pretty much. But I love home. That's that's who I am. It's, it's rooted inside of me. But, you know, home brings out a different Raquel. So, Mm. Yeah, yeah. I can tell in the way you talk that you're from the Bay too, like that you're from the city, and and in the interviews that I've seen of you, you definitely represent the city like in a, a very proud and fine way, and I and I appreciate that. Um, I love home. That's that's what made me who I am. So um, it's rooted in me. Um, mm-hmm. The Bay Area. I love the Bay Area. I love the culture. I love the food. I don't think there's any place like the Bay Area. I hate that it's being gentrified so much that it's changing and that some of our city staples are really not the same anymore. And that makes me sad too. When I go home, it is not the same. You can't turn down those streets. You know, they like feel this way. I be want to have like something on my license to say, I'm an original San Francisco. And I should really <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, I, I don't like what they do to the city, but you know, whatever it is. What it is. Did you, uh, did you come across London coming up? London Bree, the mm-hmm. mayor. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't. I really want to meet her. I think that she is amazing. Um, I'm really inspired by her. So I'm really hoping to meet her pretty soon. I'm going to come home and I'm definitely planning to meet London. I'm, I'm just like really inspired by her. I think she's a beautiful person. I love what she's doing for the city. I love how she's representing. So that's definitely on my to-do list. Yeah, I think y'all can get, we'll get along. She has like, um, in all my experiences with her, she's just like hella charming. And uh, she, you know, I'm rooting for her. I'm rooting for her like I'm rooting for you. Thank you. you Thank know? you. Yes. So I crush on her like I'm crushing on you. <laughs> <laughs> rooting for everybody black, you know, all the time. And that's real, you know. And oh, thank you. I feel flattered. But I'm really just, I'm inspired. Even um, Malia Cohen, you know, I'm inspired by her as well. She's doing her thing. You know, women are definitely stepping up and handling the business. So I'm inspired. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let's let's talk about your relationship status. I mentioned that we were going <laughs> to. Come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Usually they always I did give you a heads up. I, you, I did give you a heads up. I, okay, well. If, yeah. But it doesn't matter. We can shoot the breeze. Um, yeah, so cool. you ask, I'm going to answer it, honestly. Mm-hmm. I do have some questions related to like dating as a professional fighter, right? Okay. Are you, are you single? So I am single. Okay. Yes. It's so funny. You're like one of the only interviewers to get it out of me. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. But, you know, my supporters and fans are going to be happy because they always ask I never answer. Um, but yes, I am single. Okay. When people approach you that don't know you, that want to date you and they find out you're a fighter, what's the response like? Um, to be honest, when I meet guys, if they don't already know that I'm a fighter, I don't really tell guys that I'm a fighter. Sometimes I'm just like, uh, I don't really want to hear the typical response of, oh, I'm scared of you. Don't hit me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then sometimes I just think that some men could be intimidated by you being a fighter. Um, and so unless I feel comfortable with you and I kind of want to talk to you and I want to let you in to know, like, you know, this is what I do and so on. Then I just kind of say, oh, I'm a personal trainer. <laughs> That's like my little girl too. <laughs> I'm a personal trainer. But, but sometimes I get guys that are very, um, very supportive. Um, I have guys that are very supportive. Um, and I think sometimes guys are intimidated 
I think the ideal of dating me and actually dating me is different, um, mm-hmm. given the fact that a lot of people, the, the lifestyle of a fighter is very lonely. Um, it's very um, strict and regimented during uh, fight camp. And, you know, you just kind of have like a pretty regimented life and a lot of people can't really understand that lifestyle. So that's a big reason why I'm single because Everyone doesn't get it. They like it. And they'll be like, hey, what's up? You want to come hang out? I'm like, no, nah, I got to go run. <laughs> I got to play late. Or I got to do this. They're like, yo, you want to hang out? I'm like, no, nah, I got to. So this doesn't mm-hmm. always work out. But I feel like the right man will understand it. Uh, you, you mentioned the difference. Like there's an ideal and there's a the reality. Like what yes. is the, what is the, what do people get wrong? What's the misconception? Um, I think that the biggest misconception is well, I don't even know if it's a misconception. I just think that people don't really understand the lifestyle. And what I mean by that is it's like when I'm in fight mode and I'm about to fight, I'm a different person. Um, mm. It ain't always pretty. Sometimes it's just beast. And mm. I think that sometimes people don't really understand. Like, oh, you could just have a little drink. But now nah, I can't drink. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know, come on. We about to go kick it. And they're like, no, nah, I can't kick it. Mm. And it's for it extended period of time. So it's not like this is like one or two days. This is like usually like a month month and a half, two months. So it's just like, um, it takes a special kind of person to really understand your lifestyle and want to be a part of that type of lifestyle because, you know, it looks cute. You see a little picture, oh, she box, oh, she cute, that's cute. But no, I really fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's really what I do and it's a big part of my life. And a lot of times I feel like guys don't really understand that. And then also the aspect of I'm constantly around a lot of men. You know, a lot of my closest friends are men. Um, I'm constantly around men you know it's usually it's a male dominated sport so if a man is not confident with who he is and confident to know like you know this is what we're doing i love you and so on and so forth then it won't work either because some of my best friends are guys you know and you know it's blood in blood out you know we you know you spend enough time in the gym and you grinding and you you know supporting each other and y'all struggling with ups and downs you develop a family so a person has to come in and understand that and want to be a part of that family and want to come and be a part of that gym culture so that they feel confident in it and feel comfortable and understand that there's no BS going on. Like, it's literally like we in here grinding. We really family, you know, blood in, blood out. And so somebody has to be open to experience that and be okay with that. Yeah. And because of the, the, the notoriety that you have built in your career at this point, you know, the, the types of people you're around to are probably like, celebrity or entertainment people is that is that the case or no um i've met some celebrities um i'm pretty cool with a lot of um the you know well-known boxers or whatnot Mm -hmm. um i'm really centered with my circle um Mm -hmm. i'm not kind of for the hype i'm not for the bs i kind of keep my circle small um i know people you know some of them know me some of them don't but that's not really my lane i kind of stay in my lane i'm a really um private person when it comes to like who's in my life and who's in my circle and i'm very um strict about that and i don't really let people in my circle that don't care what your status is <laughs> you can be famous you can be maybe you can be whatever but if i don't really feel like your energy matches with my energy or that you know i really want you in my circle and in my life then no is that a tug pull for you because you are in entertainment and and you know, building a name and being on the scene can be beneficial to your career. That's definitely a challenge for me because naturally I'm just like, I'm a very outgoing person. Um, people love me, I love people, but if I didn't box, I wouldn't have social media. I would just be living my life and just doing whatever I want to do. So it's definitely a challenge for me to, you know, share more, you know, be more open. And so that's why I try to share my vacations and I try to share you know, some of my life because I want people to understand who I am and not just the boxer, but it could be very challenging because sometimes you want to keep, you know, some stuff private, like, you know, like my dating life, I don't date anyway, <laughs> but if I did date, you know, more than likely it's going to be private. It's not, I'm not like a very, you know, public person when it comes to stuff like that. And I'm just, you know, so I have to do better with, you know, sharing because a lot of people want to see the real journey of it and not just kind of what's, for TV, so to speak. So that's one of my challenges. And that's why I'm going to start a podcast pretty soon because I want people to know who Raquel Miller is, you know, why I box and how I'm more than just a boxer. So that's coming. I did my first test run um, on the 5th. So I'm pretty excited about that. Nice. And that's a way for me to 
get out of my comfort zone because I'm not a very shy person, so to speak, but then I can be shy at times. Mm-hmm. I don't always go live. I'm not like, you know, always in your face. So I want to do better to kind of give people that support me a better in-depth idea of who I am, what I represent, you know, what I believe in and so on. Yeah, let's get into some of that, what you represent, what you believe in. So we're, 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 it's an interesting time in the country. Yes. Uh, we're coming upon a presidential election. Mm-hmm. And uh, athletes in general are much more vocal in this generation. Yes. Um, it's, there's so many places to start. Uh, the Breonna Taylor verdict or the grand jury findings were just released. What is not just on that topic specifically, but where do you feel like the country is right now? Like, what do you what are you observing? I feel like the country is in shambles. I feel very heartbroken about the Breonna Taylor um, case. I feel, as a Black woman, I feel very unprotected. Um, I also think that it's bigger than just arresting the officers who murdered her. I feel like it's dismantled the system, which made it okay to murder her and for them to get away with it. I personally didn't think that they were going to be um, charged with anything. I felt like the law was set up to protect them. Um, And even though I feel like they did a lot of things wrong and they murdered her, I feel like until we dismantle the system that allows them to do that, then we will constantly lose. Um, I hate that it feels like um, all of the race and all the stuff going on is just kind of like, I feel like it was simmered down for a while. And a lot of stuff was kind of um, underhanded and not so blatant. And now with this idiot Trump in office and all of this political nonsense, it's um, it's pretty much in your face. Um, and I don't think that it's just Trump. I honestly feel like um, our votes count, but I think that they count more in the sense of the you know House, the Senate, the laws that are passed is not just on the president. I think that. A part of that, I feel like, is a puppet. And I think that until people really get a hang of more than just the president, you know, everyone needs to vote for your local representative, your local supervisors, you know, the House, the Senate, you know, stuff that really affects us and not just kind of the propaganda, which is all like, you know, I think Trump is just like an idiot. He has no tact. But I also think that he's kind of a, a ploy, for lack of better words. And I think that... There's a lot of other really big issues going on that we need to be focused on. And I think that as a black woman, and I love, you know, I love my people. I I have friends of all races, but I'm still a black woman first. And I feel like until we get a hold of loving ourselves, it's hard for other people to love us. And we don't just, I'm not at a point in my life where I'm about to beg nobody for nothing. Like, I'm not begging you to tell me my life matter. I know my life matter. I know my minute rights. I don't, I believe in arming yourself. I believe in, um, you you know, and I think a community that's well organized has to do more than just shout for change. I think it needs to be systematic. I think it needs to be um, financial. I think it needs to be educational. And I think it needs to really be in, in to out. Like, let's love ourselves. Let's you know, protect each other. Let's support each other's businesses. Let's teach each other about financial independence. Let's do more than just shout for Black Lives Matter because it's bigger than that. You touched on a lot that uh, I agree with and I want to dive deeper on. And I know that there's some, there's action that you, <coughs> bless you. <laughs> there's action that you've taken uh, to start to do the stuff that, you, that you're talking about right now. Like I know you have like a, um, a clothing line uh, that I want to get into, um, but on the, on the point of local representatives, I might have told you I'm on the school board in San Francisco, so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm elected. Oh, oh, yeah. congratulations! That's awesome. We need that. Yeah. That's so cool. uh, I was elected in 2016. Okay. The day that Trump was elected, I was elected. Hmm. Um, what anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And and the push to improve schools. You know, it's been happening for like since before Brown versus Board, right? Mm-hmm. And the the big disconnect that I always saw with the amount of attention paid to Trump was 
the amount of uh, systemic issues that were unresolved locally. Mm-hmm. And so my, the thing that I would often get back to people is that Trump didn't put all those black people in the jail or their arrest rate in your city isn't what it is because of Donald Trump. Exactly. Who's your, who's your chief of police? Who's yeah. Your chair? Yeah. Who's your chief of police? And, you know, and, and just understanding that like politics, they've never been for us. They still not going to be for us. You know, I feel like this is the less of two evils. I don't think, you know, Biden is that great either. You know, and that's just my honest opinion. Do I think that votes matter? Yeah, go vote. You know, use your rights. You know, our, a lot of our ancestors died for that. So do what's necessary. You know, do what's true to you. But also get in the habit of understanding economic power. You know, where are you putting your dollars? You know, it's like you can't be talking about Black Lives Matter and this and that. And then you spend all your money at Gucci. Every time I go to the mall, mm-hmm. I see this Gucci store wrapped around the corner. Mm-hmm. Well, like a whole bunch of us, and I'm like, you know, have you thought about investing in that Gucci stock? <laughs> you know, like, do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you giving all like your money, so it's like you can't be screaming about reparations, but then once you get them, you're gonna just give them all back. Like, we have to really learn. We have to learn. You have to relearn a lot of stuff. And I feel like it's bigger than just shouting and jumping on a bandwagon. Like, you know, like I have a friend of mine. You know, it's his name is Wall Street Trapper, and He's teaching the generations about, you know, how to invest, you know, how to build a portfolio, how to look at a company. Like, that's what we need in our system, you know, it's like in our school, in our communities. This is how we develop generational wealth. You know, this is how you take care of your body. That's why I always try to put juice in videos. And I always try to show videos of me working out because health starts from the inside out, you know, and you have to be well-rounded. Like, I'm trying to read. I'm working out. You know, I'm juicing. I'm fasting at times. I'm detoxing. I'm you know, working on my portfolio, my stocks. I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm constantly trying to teach myself the things that I didn't learn growing up mm-hmm. because I think that that's what's necessary. And it's going to take more than just, you know, screaming for anything that kind of comes up. Oh, I'm fighting for this. You know, kind of pick a battle and, you know, stay solid and figure it out. Yeah, you need to add dinner with Steve on that list somewhere for the okay. stuff that you... <laughs> 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 but, uh the history of your career getting into boxing too right because Mm -hmm. you have a very unique like i'm like trying to fix the lighting on this Mm -hmm. (laughs) you have a very unique journey because like all right so going from 1950 uh which for those who don't know and independence those are continuation schools in the city um so as a student i mean when you say that to me because i've had to oversee expulsions you know in the city like, yeah. I, I know i know what those names mean right now the amount of uh self-sacrifice you've had to commit to to get to where you are there's like you you, you operate at a, at a different level and so like this whole idea of giving something up to go out and get it is uh not everybody's like that and it's not very common for for people to become like that if they've had a rough beginning, right? And so th- there's like this, there's like this self-sufficiency thing that you're talking about, starting with the self, improving the self, um, mm-hmm. and, and what you want to see in our community, which I agree with. Like, how, what was that transition like for you? Was that like no, that's my sister in the back. <laughs> hey, sister, what's yeah, up? Right. <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> The transition for me, honestly, is I wanted to do better. I wanted better. I didn't want to be known for street fighting. I didn't want to be known for something negative. I remember growing up and feeling like I didn't really have an option to fight. It was either fight or flight. And I ain't got nowhere to run. So you got to, you know, you got to stay down. But um, I just remember as I got older, like so younger, it was a situation where it's, you know, you're either going to be eaten or, you know what I'm saying, you're going to eat. And I've always been taught to eat. So it's like, you know, nobody was going to, you know, take advantage of me or, you know, punk me. And that was just kind of the neighborhood. I'm from San Francisco, I'm from this point area. And I remember as I got older, I started working at law firms and I started, you know, evolving and wanting to do better with my life. And I remember people were coming to me and say, oh, I remember you fought such and such. And I remember this and that. And I remember it went from kind of like a stance of being proud, like, yeah, so don't, you know, say, don't play with me to, 
you know, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm kind of doing something better with my life now. You know, I'm, I've grown up. That's not where, you know, I'm, I'm at in my life right now. And so it started for me wanting to prove that I was better than a street fighter. Hmm. And then from that, it really turned into realizing that a lot of the people that I grew up with was looking for something positive to cling on to. The same, some of the same girls that I had fought in these same streets was coming up to me, seeing me running in the neighborhood saying, you know, my son look up to you, my daughter look up to you, you know, keep going, keep doing your thing. And that's powerful because then it becomes bigger than just, you know, Raquel from Hunters Point or Raquel from Sun. It becomes like, I am my community, you know, like I represent all of us and I didn't come from a good part of San Francisco. You know, we didn't have no silver spoon. I came from the hood. You know what I'm saying? I came from that. I lived that life. I have been expelled out of numerous schools. I have had numerous fights. I would carry guns. You know what I'm saying? Like, you name it, I would live that. And so to be able to show them that it's possible, that we don't have to have no silver spoons. We don't have to have no special way in. Just grind from the mud. Get you a goal. Stick to it. Manifest on it. Believe in yourself blood, sweat, and tears, stick it out. And so I still haven't got to accomplish what I really want to accomplish in boxing. Um, I'm not proud of myself yet, but I'm thankful that I've been on this journey for this long, that I've been able to inspire the people that I have, but I still got a lot more left. And I, and I, and I really want to get into like the, your, your thought process around remaining committed, right? Because like all, like stick a goal, get a goal, stick to it, manifest on it. But like when it's early and you in bed, you know, and the pillow feels good, <laughs> like, do you have a, like, what, how do you get out of bed? Because that's. Excuse me. For me, it's really about figuring out your why. And excuse me, you hear that a lot when you listen to like the motivational speakers, the Eric Thomas and all of that. But that's generally what's going to get you there. Mm-hmm. You know, you literally got to had that burning desire because it's like I've left relationships. I've left home. You know, I've left coaches. I've missed birthdays, you know, um, anniversaries, you name it. I've missed it because I had to train or I had to box. I've missed Christmases, but I feel like that my purpose is bigger than me. And if I have to sacrifice now to inspire a generation after me, if I have to sacrifice now to put my family in a better position, then, you know, I'm putting it on my back and I'm riding with it. So mm. I think that through them seeing me working out, you know, constantly, they seeing me struggle in my career, bad contracts, bull crap, you know, phony nonsense that you're dealing with the politics and they just see me still standing strong. It has to inspire them to be like, you know what, if she can do it, why can't I? Like, mm. I'm just like you. Like, I'm not, you know, some people will put in a position to win, like, they always try to count us out, but if you count me out, you can't count. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and it's always been like that. And it's always been for me, like I had a I gotta prove to myself that I'm worthy. I gotta prove to myself that I'm a world champion. And I already know it. It's time for the world to know it. And so that's just a part of my why. Like I want to retire my mom, you know. I want my mom to look at me and know that all of the sacrifices that she made were worth it. All the time she had to come to schools. All the times she had to, I had to use all her prayers. <laughs> mm-hmm. All the times I had to call her and, you know, all of that. Like, it's, it's all got to be worth it. And that's a part of my why. You know, all of them late nights, all of them fight, all of that. It has to be worth it. I have to show my community and my people that it's possible that we can come from the mud and make it to the mountaintop. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I love the the mentality of fighters. You know, I think I think I think fighting is is definitely my favorite thing to watch. Like the UFC, um, I loved rooting for Floyd Mayweather because <laughs> because everybody hated him. I kind of like I, I kind of got a, I I got clung I clung to the villains. Like I used to love Terrell Owens for the similar reasons, and anybody that's on that uh, at any cost, I'm committed to like pushing myself. I like to observe those people. Okay. So that's, I appreciate you saying that and and being that. Um, For your business pursuits. Yes. Let's talk about the the Pretty Beast. Yes. So the PP brand came from my fight nickname of Pretty Beast. Pretty Beast started as a joke and ended up being kind of like it just stuck. And the PP brand is really about look good, feel good, handle your business and do good, and not allowing anybody to put you in a box. 
And a lot of times when I tell people I'm a fighter, like, oh, you're too pretty to be a fighter or you're not really a fighter. Let me see you throw a punch. But you don't have to look like a fighter to be a fighter. You just got to go ahead and be a business when it's time to. And so that's kind of where the brand came from. And I remember initially when I first started um, boxing, every fighter is like, or any athlete is like, you know, I want to be signed by, by Nike or Reebok or Puma. And so initially that was my goal, you know, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to work really hard and I'm going to get signed by them. And the more I kept evolving, I'm like, I don't need Nike or Reebok or anybody to validate who I am. Like I put in this blood, sweat and tears and I don't need to stamp your old logo on me to make me feel special. Like I can create something that represents me. I can create something that I feel like represents all the people that believe in me, that supports me. Like, you know, I want to work hard. I want to look good in whatever I put on. And I also don't want to be defined. So I can be pretty and I can be a beast. You know, I can go hard. I can be a mechanic if I want to as a woman and then turn around and put my high heels on and handle my business. Like, I don't want to ever be defined by somebody else's standard. And that's why I created my brand, because I want people to feel good. I want them to know, you know, working out, taking care of your body is really important. And it's okay to look good in the process. You know, mm-hmm. don't think that because you are a basketball player or whatever, you have to look macho and so on. I've got that a lot. I'll go, well, you don't feel like, you know, you got to look. I don't have to do anything but be me. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's it. All you have to do, you can do whatever you want to do and do it your way. So it was like when they write my story in the history books, it's going to be she did her own thing and she did it her way. And she created a gang of people that loved and supported this movement and wanted to be a part of this and mm-hmm. wanted to, you know, embrace that type of lifestyle. We work hard, we handle business, and we look good in the process. Mm-hmm. So what what, are, what is the type of merchandise? Where, so can, I have, where can they be found? Um, so my website is um, thepbbrand.com. Um, it's on the social media. I keep it on my social media handles as well. Um, and it's pretty much workout gear. I'm going to be adding more um, items pretty soon, probably like within the next month. I'll have more items gearing up for the holiday season, getting everybody ready. Okay. <laughs> We're not trying to gain no holiday weight. We did enough gaining weight through this whole uh-huh. pandemic. Uh-huh. So I'm, you know, I'm gearing up for the holiday season, getting everybody ready. But it's the pbbrand.com. Um, you can also find it on my social media handles MS period, Raquel Miller on Instagram, um, Raquel Miller on Facebook, and um, Miss Pretty Bees on Twitter. So, okay. and I also have on Athleisure Wear, you know, we have like hoodies, sweatshirts, track suits, um, t shirts, you know, baseball caps and stuff like that. So, you know, mm-hmm. I try to keep it fly. I like to think that I've always been a dresser and I've always liked clothes, and it's just always something that's been a part of me. And now it's mm-hmm. just like I get to, you know, express that type of side of me as well. Yeah, in my, in my research on you, uh, I found the brand. And um, I'm committed to like buying whoever whoever comes on the show. I want to buy whatever they do, you know. You. So I'm, I'm gonna have my PB uh, gear. At yes, the, the guys on my to do, like the pure beast <laughs> edition for the guys and the pretty beast for the women. But then I'm also gonna have like a, a classic collection for the guys. So some of the guys are like, well, I'm a pretty beast too. Uh, <laughs> okay. Coming, but some of the line will be just like um really. Uh, kind of understated. It'll just have the logo. It won't be a lot of the um, verbiage on the on the clothing. So right, it'll right. be something for everybody. You know, if you want mm-hmm. to be pure beast, pure beast, or if you just kind of want to support the brand and you just like the material, you like the product, I'm, I'm with that too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was looking on your Instagram and I saw you quoting Nipsey. Yes, I love Nipsey. Yeah. 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 I, love about Nipsey. I just think that he was a real special gym. Um, I think that his mindset I think that his way of wanting to give back. I'll tell you an interesting story. I was reading something about Nipsey, and he said that he used to give water and snacks to the different, um, you know, workers in the community that was cleaning up the neighborhood or, you know, fixing the lights and stuff like that. And so now, well, right since he passed away, I would see some of the workers outside my house, and I'd be like, you know, you want some water? You know, you want a snack? And it's my way of just kind of like always paying it forward and remembering. Just some of the small things, you know, and it's the small things, of course, um, you know, you're very inspired just because he was so innovative and just, you know, ownership, but then also just the small things, you know, doing right by people, being a good person, seeing somebody that, you know, maybe can use a drink of water and giving it to them. And I think that that's what kind of legacy I want to have in regards to like somebody do a good deed and be like, you know, what I'm saying, thinking about me and say, you know what, she inspired me to want to do this or do that or help this person or do this and I, and I like that a lot mm-hmm. so shout out to Nipsey thank you you know for inspiring us all yeah amen mm-hmm. and when you were talking about the uh 
doing it on your own with your brand. Yeah, I thought about like the Bay Area roots of independence, but also his story with like the Marathon clothing brand and and all of that. So who who are some of your inspirations? Um, it's a great question. I think that one of my biggest inspirations, I really like Angela Bassett. I mean, I really like Posada. Oh, you kind of look like Angela Bassett. So okay. I like Angela Bassett. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I really like Asada. Um, okay. I let me see who's one I, I really love Muhammad Ali. He's one of my favorite people of all time, and I just think that he was a really special individual. Um, who else? Let's see. Um, but Asada, I just finished reading her book again for the second time. I really like Angela Bassett, um, and I just love dope people as a whole. Um, mm-hmm. I just love dope people as a whole. And I kind of take bits and pieces from all kind of different people, mm-hmm. all kind of different books, all kind of different people. The Alchemist is one of my favorite books. Um, I just feel like I'm one of those type of people where I just kind of want to know something about everything. I am constantly trying to learn. I'm constantly, you know, watching documentaries. I'm constantly reading about some random weird event that happened. That's just me. So I'm inspired by a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. What's your What's your favorite punch? I really like my left hook. Okay. It's one of my favorite punches. Okay. Um, it's one of my most snappy punches, and I just like it. I landed and it worked, and it's money. I like it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's gotta work. Yeah. yeah it works. So I like yeah. it. Yeah. No, I um I just started like uh, training with somebody to to learn all the like you know, within the last two years to learn all okay. the actual ways to do a, a real jab and like mm-hmm. the work. And so I was watching you. I was like, oh, oh yeah. She like, you know, <laughs> you. Tight, like, pop, pop, <laughs> like footwork on point. <laughs> yeah. And that's one thing I think once you actually start training or you start learning boxing, you start respecting boxers a whole lot more because you realize there's so much going on while we're in the ring. A lot of people think you're just in there fighting, but it's levels. It's mm-hmm. a whole bunch of, you know, strategic planning going on it's a whole bunch of thinking going on it's a way more than just in your fighting for sure right so i wanted to ask you about the um <clears throat> getting in somebody's head uh perception like what you what your thoughts are on that um how much it's a factor the mind games i think it's a really big factor depending on the person i think that if you're one of those kind of people that really um can't take criticism and you know, really feed into somebody else's kind of antics, it's definitely going to affect you. I think that um, it's really just the person because, like, people will talk about me, um, you know, even, like, my opponents or girls that I'm going to potentially fight. And I'm honestly always in my own world. I should probably pay more attention to that because I don't. And I think that I've always been like that. Like, I've always been a leader. I've always marched to my own drum. I've never really been concerned about what somebody else thought about me. And so mm-hmm. for me personally, it'd be like, people call me, I ain't worried about that. You feel some kind of way respond for me. <laughs> what you want me to do? Like I'm on my way living my real life. And if those same people are not gonna say that in my face, what you want me to do? Like I got life to live over here. I don't have time to be reading comments and fighting them. Like, you getting blocked, get up out of here. Like I don't have time for that energy. And so, I think that it will definitely affect you if you're a weak-minded person or you're a person that's really consumed with what other people think. I think if you're a strong-minded person, you know that just comes with the territory and there's nothing. And half of the people that be talking, they see you down, they ain't got nothing to say. So it's just like everybody is bold and, you know, tough online, but it's nothing. And, you know, everybody be talking their talk when we get in the ring. We got to let them hands go. You know, all the talking got to cease. So what I look like caring about what somebody got to say, show me. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you a few more San Francisco questions. Sure. <laughs> I also want to make sure, don't let me forget to tell you about my nonprofit organization. I definitely want to touch bases on that before we go. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. You yes, want to do that? Now? So, um, definitely so. So, um, my sister and I, we founded Ladies in Power. Um, we've been, um, we had our 501c3 for about 10 years now. Um, and it's a mentorship program for young women and young men. And it teaches on a healthy living, um, financial literacy. Um, it really touches on my like, confidence building and um, mental health. We decided we want to start our organization. It's ladiesempower.org. You can check us out. Um, Ladies in Power 
on um, all of the social media platforms. And we wanted to create that because we felt like we didn't have that growing up in San Francisco. Um, you know, therapy is really like a taboo subject in our community. Um, mental health issues are very downplayed. No one really had a bunch, a real sense of financial literacy. And so for us, it was really about creating something that we didn't feel like we had. Like I didn't have a mentorship program to kind of go and say, hey, can I talk to somebody that might be going through some things or have the experience some things that I'm experiencing or, you know, just a safe place. And that's why we created Ladies in Power. Um, with the COVID thing, it's kind of, you know, put a damper on things. But we're really excited. Um, next year, we're going to do our fifth annual Find Like a Girl. We're going to, this year was an fifth annual one, but of course COVID happened and we didn't get to do it. Um, next year, we're going to also do Beauty is Me. So it's really um, about giving back and having that platform to really let young women and young men know that we're here. We understand and we want to set you up for success and not failure in the future. So yeah. financial literacy. Uh, mental health. health and in, in healthy mentorship. living, working out, mentorship type of things, yes. Mm-hmm. What 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 area of the of the country are you focused on? What in terms of um, San Francisco? I feel like I have to start where I'm from first because that's where I knew the need was, and then continuously have it grow. So it's probably going to start in San Francisco. Well, we've already started in San Francisco, but the headquarters when we actually do get a location, it'll first start in San Francisco, and then we're going to move to Southern California, and then you know, God willing, we'll go to different parts of the United States and eventually the world. Um, just kind of keep planting those seeds, creating a community, and really, you know, each one teach one type of situation. Nice. And so, are you you're prepared now to accept donations also? Yes. So we're um, we, like everything is um, tax deductible. They can um, donate online. They can donate by either just kind of donating to an event that we're going to do. They can also just donate to the organization. As I said, we have our um, tax exemption. So if you want to donate and um, get your tax write off. Definitely, please support us. You know, it's 100% of the proceeds go to our organization and just making a difference. We haven't been funded yet, but the work still has to happen. So, you know, we do everything out of pocket. But God willing, we'll get funded. But, you know, until that day happens, we're still going to be here for our community doing our part. Yeah, I I ran a nonprofit for five years. It was like Ah, nice when I was on the school. Before I ran for school board, I just started a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. That whole grind. it's a grind. Yeah. Uh, so it's we, definitely a grind. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, you know how to grind, and uh, so yeah, you, you got a professional fighting career. You have a clothing, mm-hmm. a nonprofit. Yes, it's hard, but I, I feel like I have to be understanding that boxing is not going to last forever. Mm-hmm. I have to be, you know, realistic with the fact that I, you know, I don't want to box for another you know, five years or something like that. You don't want to box for another maybe, you know, a year or two, but I'm not going to box forever. I want to be able to pivot. I want to be able to really focus on my nonprofit organization, focus on my clothing brand, and really just focus on the podcast and really just continuously grow. And so it's important that, you know, anybody that's watching this, don't be afraid to create multiple streams of income for yourself and multiple avenues to where you can pivot in different directions. If you want to, you don't have to be pigeonholed. Like I'm more than just a boxer. I'm a fighter, definitely, but I'm more than just a fighter. I'm an entrepreneur, you know, um, I'm a nonprofit founder, you know, I'm an animal lover, but there's more to it. So I definitely want to make sure that I'm tapping on all those different things. I'm probably going to start a travel blog eventually too. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Wait, wait, okay. Well, do you have a pet now? What you- I do have a pet. Um, I do have a dog, Speedy. She's black beauty. I don't know where she is. I don't show you to her. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know. She's, she's actually right there. Bibi, come. Hi. Right, yeah. So I do. Um, I, I, if I wasn't boxing initially, so this is this is my black beauty here. Okay. Bibi. <laughs> but, um, What's up, Bibi? Um, if I wasn't um, boxing initially, I wanted to be a veterinarian. So mm. there's mm. a lot of different things. I told you, I'm always kind of trying to grab knowledge. Um, mm-hmm. So I absolutely love animals a lot. So it's one yeah. of my, you know, near and dear to my heart. I mm. think they're amazing. That, that definitely makes you a San Franciscan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I love them. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's but up. Yeah. So actually my San Francisco questions, let me see if I'm how Frisco I am. <laughs> Well, now I was, I was so I was going to ask you about um, the music scene before we uh, wrapped up, and I I want to do a, a few more things about issues, but I'm not going to keep you past or a lot of time. So, 
So I, I'm assuming you grew up listening to Cameo. I did. Um, who are your who are your favorite Bay Area artists? My favorite Bay Area artists. Well, growing up, I really liked. You know, I grew up with the Keep the Snakes and the Three Times Crazy and okay. uh, RBO Posse. I was young, but my sister loved RBO Posse, and that was kind of where I was from. So that was mm-hmm. a whole thing. Um, you know, shout out to Mr. Fab. That's one of my good friends. Mm-hmm. So I've always appreciated, you know, Bay Area rap culture, you know, the hyphy movement and all of that. Um, so my favorite, I like the Yuck Mouth. I used to, like, <laughs> I'm a rap girl. I like all of the Bay Area rap Yuck music. Mouth. I'm a Bay Area girl. Shout out to Mac Dre, you know, and I slept on Mac Dre for years. And then I missed his epic, epic show and heartbroken. And he passed shortly after that. Shout out to Mac Dre and rest in peace. But I'm a Bay Area girl, um, you know, thorough. So I represent all of the Bay Area artists, you know, and, and I love them. And now that I'm not there and I'm a little older than the artists, some of the new rappers, I'm like, I don't know that much. <laughs> Someone was telling me about some people, and I was like, yeah. Uh-huh. Telling me about Larry June and somebody else. And I was like, oh, I have yeah, to like yeah. get yeah. in the know. <laughs> I didn't know who they were talking about. I'm like, what? But yeah. Yeah, so, but, yeah Larry. Yeah, Larry yeah, even shout out to her and, you know, Kehlani. I, I just love mm-hmm. the area. You know, that's, that's home. I came across Larry June randomly on Spotify through like some <laughs> type of like, however they queue yeah. up, whoever. And I've been on Larry. I've been listening to a lot of Larry June lately. Yeah. Like a lot. <laughs> I have a, somebody I work with, and he listens. He was like, you know, you're from the Bay. You don't. And I was like, who? Uh-huh. He's from Frisco. And I was like, oh, okay. And yeah, he's so younger. Now I know a little bit about uh-huh. Larry June because I've heard some of his music. So, you know, mm-hmm. shout out to Larry June. I heard a little about him, too. What do you miss about the city? I mean, I know you said that you, it's the like. Food. You know, okay. I miss San Francisco food. I think that we have some of the best food in the world. Mm. And I don't think I'm being biased. I've been all around the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that San Francisco has a very unique, good food experience. You know, we got cha-cha-chas, we got crustaceans, you know, we got like all of these mom and pop (laughs) places, you know, we're not like really just kind of over consumed with a lot of the commercial eateries. Mm -hmm. And growing up, we didn't really understand that. Until you move somewhere else and you're like, oh my God, how many more Fridays? How many more, you know, Applebee's? And we didn't have that growing up. So we got to experience different cultures of food and pretty authentic food. And I will say this, the Mexican food in the Northern California and Southern is totally different. Huh. And, and I don't know who's the best no more. Because when I first moved to Southern California, I was like, what is this? Like, uh-huh. it was not right to me. And they were like, what are you talking about? Like, you don't know street tacos? And I'm like, no. Uh-huh. So I just think it's different. But I really love the food. But I don't know. Maybe I met our Mexican food a little bit. We lose a little bit. But I still think it's amazing. But I think that Southern yeah. California maybe got to be just because they're closer to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they can have that, you know. But we we got like a burrito thing here, and it's that the taco culture is definitely a lot bigger than other places. But yeah, we have you absolutely right about that. I didn't even think yeah. about that until you just said that. We definitely have a burrito culture. We mm-hmm. don't have like a taco culture, and a taco mm-hmm. culture is like the you know universal type of thing. Because like I didn't even like their burritos, and they put French fries in their burritos, and I was like, mm-hmm. what is this? Like, why would you put a French fry in the burrito? And they call it a California burrito. I'm like. Mm-hmm. That's a Southern California burrito. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> what? Yeah, so it was yeah, weird. It's funny. It's disrespectful. How dare you? I was like, why is there a French fry? Uh-huh. But yeah, so I, I miss, and I'm always going to miss home. Like, I miss the hills. I used to run the hills all the time. Mm. In, you know, Hunter's Point. And I just, I miss, I miss the food. I miss the culture, but I miss kind of like the original throwback culture Mm -hmm. where you can go to San Francisco and you can meet people from all different walks of life. You know, like San Francisco prepared me for the world. Like I knew about Filipinos and Samoan people and, you know, different ethnicities and different races. It was like I was pretty much exposed to all of that. So whereas I go places and I'm like, oh, you're Samoan. They were like, yeah, how you know? I'm like, yeah, I see. <laughs> we got some, you know, yeah, yeah, I, I just yeah. really <laughs> cultured on certain things, and you, you get that from San Francisco. And mm-hmm. I really hate that sometimes I come home now and it's like gray. It's like, you know, you would get the 
the goth people and you would get the hippies and you go to the Hay Street, you know, you would go to Chinatown. There were so many different experiences in San Francisco that, you know, you nothing really surprised you. And now you go and it's just kind of like a lot of the people just look the same. And that's never been the culture in San Francisco. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not like, oh, I got to move back home. Because I feel like home has changed so much. It's different. I'm interested in asking about the the types of people that are really into like female boxing and female fighting. Like, so do you watch UFC at all or no? I do. I do. Shout out to my yeah. friend Chris Cyborg. Um, I saw the I saw the sparring. We oh, spar. Wow. You know, we work we work together pretty frequently. Um, so I watch it. Um, yeah. I'm not like the biggest UFC fan, but right. I think they be doing a thing. I love the fact that the women are getting a lot of um, attention, um, with a lot of exposure. I think that that's one of the main things missing in women boxing. You know, it's just like it's such a shady, corrupt sport. You have so many shady individuals that's really kind of holding women boxing back. You know. A lot of us are stuck in contracts that are really forbidding us from being able to have big fights or be able to move around with different networks. So a lot of people are constantly like, when are you going to fight? When are you going to fight? Um, I'm in my contract until next year. Unfortunately, COVID extended a lot of our contracts. Hmm. So it's a very challenging thing. But I'm sorry, what were you going to say about the UFC? No, just just what you, I mean, that's what I've observed. Like, I, I know I, I watch more i know more women fighters because of usc and you know after Layla ali i just kind of like yeah you know i don't really hear about i mean for men's boxing too like floyd mayweather was pretty much the only person that you heard about and then you heard about you know triple g or some of the pacquiao mm-hmm. some of the other big names but there are a ton of fighters and there's like five yes. you hear about it, you know mm-hmm. and then on the women's side like you know yeah, and, and I feel like it's really a situation of just like exposure because, mm-hmm. you know, you can't really make a division of fighters for women if you don't give us the notoriety, if you don't give us the TV space, if you don't give the fans an opportunity to know who we are. Like UFC women fighting really took off once they did the reality show. They did that reality show and then people, because some people aren't really attracted, so to speak, initially to the females fighting. Some people think we don't need to fight, blah, blah, blah. But once you kind of see that we're more than just fighters, you know, shout out to my best friend, Tierra Brown. She's a police officer. You know, it's a lot of dope women that do a lot of dope things. It just so happen to box too. And I think that if we were given the platform to really share who we are and really kind of have the world know, then it becomes more than just a female fighter. You are a fan of Raquel Miller. You're a fan of Tierra Brown. You're a fan of us and we just so happen to fight. And then you see how hard we work and you want to support that. And I think that that was what really opened up the doors for UFC fighters, for the women, because you got to find out, you know, Ronda Rousey and the Misha Tate, they had their little thing going on. And then Dana White was smart enough to say, you know what, I'm going to promote them exactly the same. I'm going to promote them and, you know, give the world the opportunity to pick and choose who they want to see. And if they're really more interested in this girl fight, I'm putting it as the main event and so on. And so I think that that's like a big thing with women boxing. They're protecting certain fighters. They're only giving certain fighters opportunities um, in this hurting the sport as a whole, I think. Uh, so I'm going I'm to transition into our rapid fire round because we're coming to the top of the hour. Uh, I'd like to first thank Miss Raquel Miller for taking the time to do this today. Thank uh, you for having was, me. I appreciate you. She was born the day after Valentine's Day. I was. <laughs> and as a girl, like a lot of people will be like, oh, do you love your birthday? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the city of San Francisco, you're our Valentine every every day, every every week, every thank year. You. I love my city. I love San Francisco. And I thank, you know, everybody in my city that love me, that support me, that come to my fights, that buy tickets, that buy merchandise. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, y'all keep me pumped up. You keep me going. They be going to war for me online. I told y'all to be reading the comments when my people be sending me. God, I just like, I love them, but I appreciate that. It doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you, guys. The rapid fire. I don't have to ask you if you're ready because, you know, you, you always Stay ready. Know. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you meditate? Absolutely. I try to meditate every day. Do you have a motto? Earned, not given. What personal weakness can you forgive in someone? That was really rapid fire. I can forgive. <laughs> you you got to answer quick. Um, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. I gotta come back. Come back. <laughs> come, back <laughs> yeah, come back. Okay. The house is on fire. The family is out. You have to grab three things. What do you grab? I'm gonna grab. Make sure I grab my dog. I'm going to try to grab any photographs that I can grab. And I'm gonna grab my guns. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna grab. Second yeah. Amendment. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna grab. <laughs> yeah. um, what's one book you would recommend? The Alchemist. I love that book. It's one of my favorite books. It's an easy read. It's very good. What's kind of helping you on your path and on your journey and where you are with it. Alchemist. Good book. Read it. Last and final question. Who's going to win the presidential election? I really, <laughs> I hope Biden wins. The way this country is right now, I really don't know. But I think that no matter who wins this presidential election, our money is power. You know, our voice matters. I think that get out of the habit of thinking that some politician is going to save you. You got to save yourself. Get educated, you know, get your finances together. Invest, you know, protect your family. Buy some guns. <laughs> necessary to protect yourself. That's my final word. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's what I think. This was Raquel Miller. Uh, undisputed, undefeated. I always wanted to say that. So <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. WBA super, um, super, super welterweight. Uh, welterweight champion. <laughs> yes, I'm an intern. Um, Super World Tour champion, and I'm soon to be world champion. So, you know, as soon as they open up them, them floodgates, it's on. And the world haven't even got a taste of Miss Rick Emily yet, but they will. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> Wait for and, that, and that's it. Peace, peace. And thank you for listening to another episode of Cook on Monday Morning. At Cook on Monday Morning, we are building lives that make us excited about Monday morning. We believe that if you can own Monday morning, you can own the week. If you can own the week, you can own the year. And if you change your year, you can change your life. I'd like to thank boxing champion Raquel Miller for sharing her story and taking uh, our conversation in a slightly different direction. She has an important fight coming up, and we didn't talk at all about that. But uh, whoever she's up against, my money is on the pretty beast. I'd like to thank you also our listeners i'm grateful uh for your continued support thank you please share the podcast with a friend uh, help us grow our community of doers please also take a minute to subscribe to the podcast uh, on youtube or wherever you listen to podcasts you can also uh, take a minute to review it on apple it helps people find it it helps people know that it's worth listening to and i'd greatly appreciate that if you're interested in starting a podcast, I wrote an article. It's called How to Start a Podcast During the Pandemic. It goes over all the equipment that we use and uh, I offer some book recommendations that I've uh, found useful in getting a podcast off the ground. Uh, you can read the full article. It's in the description below. Cook on Monday Morning is a product of the Luther Harris Holding Company, where we work in partnership to create solutions that drive social impact. Uh, we do that by building strategic partnerships between businesses and government. Uh, we do uh, diversity recruiting to high impact roles within companies. And we help companies drive impact in the communities where they do business. If you'd like to learn more about that, send me an email. It's uh, info at stevoncook.com. I'd like to thank the people that make this podcast possible. Our videographer, David Topete. Thank you, sir. And our copy editors, Fernando and Cinco Marquez and Devin Sketchinger. Now, I get up every Monday morning with the intention to create value and showcase my love to the people that keep our cities moving. They are our teachers, school lunch workers, custodians, social workers, firefighters, police officers, EMT workers, garbage collectors, bus drivers, nurses. They are our employers the folks creating jobs and keeping our economy moving. They are our gig workers, uh, stocking our shelves, driving our ride shares, delivering our food to all of you. This podcast is for you. You live in places like San Francisco, Oakland, Richmond, Antioch, San Mateo, Los Angeles, Dallas, Houston, 
New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Miami, Orlando, the Carolinas, Virginia Beach, Milwaukee, Kansas City, Cleveland, Detroit, Harlem, Brooklyn. Uh, shout out to our listeners also in Nigeria, Ghana, Jamaica, Kenya, and Ethiopia. To all of you, this podcast is for you. This message is touching the world and will continue to because of you. Until we meet again. Peace.